In this video, I'm going to show you how to join two river reaches. I've initially loaded a network called Tributary Unconnected. This will be available for you to download yourself from a link that we'll provide in the description below. This network consists of a flow time boundary upstream. Then we've got lots of river sections coming down our main reach until we get to a point here where we then have, I'll just pan a little bit so we can see a little bit better. And we've then got our tributary joining on. Um, we can see that this has also got a flow time boundary and then a couple of river sections. And then we've got this river section here where the tributary joins our main reach. And we can see at the moment that this isn't connected as we expect it to be. So let's look at how we can connect these reaches properly. So initially in the 1D River Network table, we're going to select that river section that's where the tributary joins our main reach. So that's this M048 here. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to copy. Then we're going to select the most downstream node of the tributary itself. This is our Trib02. Going to right click again and then we're going to select paste. We need to give this guy a label. So I'm just going to call him Trib Downstream. Now we'll do the same thing again. So we'll select that river section that's where they join. Right click and copy. Now I'll select the node in the main reach immediately upstream of where the tributary is going to join. So that's this one up here, MO47. Again, I'm going to right click in the river network table there and select paste. And we'll label this main downstream. OK. Now in both of those new nodes, I need to have the distance to next equal to zero. So if we go to our trip downstream there, double click to open that up and the distance to next section, put as equal to zero and hit OK. And just for visualization purposes, I'm also going to select to move that node. I'm just going to move it to the bottom of my tributary there and go move nodes again to get out of that mode. And I've got to do the same for my main downstream that I added. So you can see he's over here at the moment. Again, the important thing is to set the distance to next equal to zero. But I'm also just going to right click, select move nodes and then move him over here instead, just so that we can more easily visualize what's going on. So now I'm ready to add my junction node. So in the 1D River Build tab, to go over to Junctions and then select Open Junction. And then I'm going to pop this just where the tributary joins down here. And in terms of the labels, I need to give the label of both of those new nodes that I added. So that was Main Downstream and Trib Downstream. And then that initial river section that I had, so that was my M048. I'll click OK. And we can see that it's already picked up that all three of these already exist in my model. And then I want to connect these, so I'm going to select Yes. And then immediately we can see that the lines are all adjusted on my map here and things are looking much more as we expect. We've got our main reach coming down here and then our tributary, which is joining through where that junction is. Now, the important things to note here are that we've got these three river sections and that they are identical because we took a copy of this guy initially. So this is going to help with stability where our tributary joins because there's no difference in that cross-sectional data. And we also have that the two nodes that are immediately upstream of the junction both have the distance to next equal to zero. Your simulations won't run at all if this isn't the case. And now to finish up, we always want to make sure that we save our network. I'm actually going to choose save as and we'll call this tributary, I can spell it, tributary connected. I've actually also already got one of those, so let's save over the top of that. 
and I'll provide this network file also so that you can check this out if you want to take a look. So now to confirm everything's working as we expect, let's just start a new 1D simulation. Let's give this a name. And then here I'm just going to choose an unsteady simulation to run for 30 hours. And that's with, we check over here, our tributary connected dot that. Let's run that. And now in the network that we've got here, if we look right at the top of that first QT boundary that we've got, we can see we've just got a steady flow there of 200 QMAX. Whereas when we go down to where the tributary itself is, we've got a um, flow that has been determined here. So this is representing some kind of storm event. So we'll be expecting that once this is all being connected up correctly, that upstream of the junction, we have a reasonably steady flow of around 200 QMAX from that first flow time boundary. Although as we move downstream, we will expect this to be affected by, by backstream, by the tributary. And then downstream of the junction, we're expecting to see this increase and decrease in flow. So a similar shape to our plot that we've got here. So now I'm hoping that our simulation has finished. Yes, that's at 100%. So now if we just go in and look at some results, I'll choose a time series. I want to look at the flow rather than the stage. And I'm going to, I don't want to look at what's happening in tributary 01. Let's look at one of the nodes from far upstream here. And then let's look at that M048, which was where we joined on. And if we plot that, we can see exactly what we expect. So where we're really far upstream here, we've got pretty steady flow of 200 QMAX. Whereas as we get past our tributary, we can see that bell curve that we had in our tributary um, QT boundary. Thank you for watching this tutorial video on how to join two river reaches. And as always, for additional information, please check out www.floodmodeler.com.